In these problems, we're being asked to identify the intervals on which this function is either increasing in value or decreasing in value. And the derivative is going to be uh, involved in figuring this out. And that's pretty logical. If you've got a function that's sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing, what the derivative tells you is the slope of that tangent line. Where the function is increasing, the slope of that line is positive. Where the function is decreasing, the slope of that line is negative. And where the function is changing, it's zero. So what we want to do in a problem like this is take the derivative of our function, find the zeros, because those are the points, the critical points where it changes, and then we'll test the regions on either side of those um, relative maxima or minima. And if we test the derivative, if we get a positive value, we know the function's increasing. If we get a negative value, we know the function's decreasing. So let's put this in practice. I'm going to take the derivative of this function first. So we have f prime of x equals 6x squared plus 36x plus 30. And we'll go ahead and set this equal to 0 and solve for the zeros. I'm going to pull a 6 out of here. I've got x squared plus 6x plus 5. And that factors to x plus 5 times x plus 1. So our x values are x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 1. Now I'm going to draw a little number line here. So we have negative 5, we have negative 1, and we have these three regions. So in each of these regions, the function is either going to be increasing or decreasing. And here or here, we have a relative max or min. We'll actually be able to find out which in just a moment. To test these regions, I'm simply going to select a point to plug in. So for example, I could, and I'll, I think I'll just make a little chart here. I'm going to plug in some values for x and test the derivative. So this is f prime of x I'm testing. If I plug in a negative 6 into the derivative here, so I'd get 36 minus 36 plus 5. That's a positive 5. That's a positive value. So the function is increasing here. It's going up, which means this is probably a max. Let's find a point in here. I think I'll choose negative 2. That should be pretty easy. So we've got 4 minus 12 plus 5. That's going to be a negative 3. So the function is decreasing here. And uh, that definitely is a relative max. And then let's choose a point here. This one's easy. I'm going to choose 0. And that gives you a value of 5 again. And that's positive. So it's increasing. So we find our zeros of the derivative. And then we test these regions in the derivative. Positive value means increasing. Negative value means decreasing. And then we would want to write these intervals. I think I'm going to put this in interval notation. So these lines stretch on forever, of course. This is just a nice polynomial function, so it's going to stretch out to infinity there. Uh, so from negative infinity up to negative 5, we have an interval of increase. So from negative infinity to negative 5. And the other increase is from negative 1. So I'm going to put a union sign here. So negative 1 up to infinity. So those are our intervals of increase. And then it's decreasing on this interval right here from negative 5 to negative 1. And I use the, the round brackets, the round parentheses, because none of these points are included. That actual point is the point where the function is neither increasing nor decreasing. It's uh, uh, where the, the slope of the tangent line is 0. Let's try one more. In this problem, we have a rational function. And there are going to be some little differences in how we approach this, although in general, it's pretty much the same. We're going to find out where the derivative of this is 0. And then we're also going to have to look at the points where the function is not defined, where it's discontinuous. Uh, and then we'll test the regions on all of those points, around all of those points. So let's take the derivative of this first. So f prime of x 
And actually, I think maybe an easier way to write this would be x squared minus 6x plus 5 to the negative 1. That's the same as 1 over that. And then we'll apply the power rule here. So this will be negative 1 times x squared minus 6x plus 5 to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside. We're using the chain rule here. And the derivative of the inside would be 2x minus 6. Now let's rewrite this as negative 2x minus 6 over x squared minus 6x plus 5 quantity squared. This is our derivative. Now where this is going to equal 0 is where this factor on the top, this piece on the top is going to be 0 and that would be where x equals 3. So that's one of our points of interest, x equals 3. And then the points where it's going to be undefined um, is where the bottom equals 0. And it looks like maybe we can factor this. So x minus 5 times x minus 1. Yeah, that does it. So we have x equals 5 and x equals 1. So we've got three points of interest here. And we're going to test them all. So we've got 1, 3, Five. We're going to test all of these regions now. One, two, three, four regions. And we're going to test them in our derivative to see whether this is increasing or decreasing. So let's try, let's try zero over here. That's usually pretty easy. So we'd have a, a negative negative six on top. So that'd be a positive on top. And on the bottom, we would have five squared. So that'd be a positive thing on the bottom. So a positive over a positive is a positive. So it's increasing right there. All right, let's look in here. So let's put in a 2. Yeah, let's put in a 2. So we have um, 4 minus 6. That's a negative 2, but a negative negative 2. So that's a positive. And if we put a 2 in on the bottom, we're going to have a positive. This is squared, so the bottom is always going to be positive. So it looks like it's increasing here too. And let's cho choose a point in here. 4 looks good. So 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 6 is 2. And that's a negative. So it's a negative on top. And the bottom will be positive because it's squared. So that's decreasing. And then let's choose a point out here. I'll choose 6. 2 times 6 is 12, minus 6 is 6, and then you put a negative on that, so the top is negative, bottom is positive, so it's decreasing there as well. So what we found is that it's decreasing all here from 3 on up, and it's increasing from negative infinity on up to 3. So we can write that in interval notation, so it's increasing on the interval of negative infinity to 3, and it's decreasing on the interval of 3 to infinity. So that is a little bit of work with finding the intervals of increase and decrease on functions. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can find us on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.